welcome to the January Vini Curiosity case. Quick preview, hope you enjoy it. Um, the wines are going to be delivered on the 17th and the 18th of January. The virtual tasting will be on the 19th. Everyone's welcome. Um, even if you're not a member of the Wine Club and you just want to know what it's all about, just want to log in and have a look, just send me an email. Send it to ben at batwine.uk and I'll send you through the link to come in and join us. Um, otherwise, if you want to have the small bottle tastings that go out, if you, don't, if you don't receive them automatically and you want a copy, then do do quickly go online and order one. Log in if you're a Wine Club member or you won't get your discounts. Um, and if you want to join Vina Curiosity and just try that case out, then do just join up. Be great, great to have new members. We love it. Um, anyway, I'll talk you through the wines, try and persuade you all. The, the new and the existing, just how lovely this case is, because it's, it's a gorgeous case as well, I love it. We kick off, I'm going to start with wine number two, and it's a Pianta Grossa. Pianta Grossa is brand new estate for us this year. Pianta Grossa just means big plant. Um, and I found this estate a couple of years ago, quite by accident. I was just taking some pictures in Donas, and I thought, oh, there's another estate here. I thought there was only one producer in Donas, but there aren't, there are two. Um, so we are now importing from both of them, which is pretty exciting. So as you come out of the Osta Valley, this is the last village before you enter uh, Piemonte. Um, and it's where, if you're a skier, it's where you turn left and you go off into the Monte Rossa. But from here, the next village down is Carnema, uber fashionable for mountainside um, Nebbiolo. And quite rightly, it's one of the the great terroir for Nebbiolo on Earth. Um, Donas has pretty much exactly the same terroir, um, just as not quite as trendy, and it's Aosta, so it's very bat and bottle to just sort of try and focus in on this. And they also have, well, Luca here has, he has, um, uh, he, he has Herbaluce. So the Herbaluce, what is Herbaluce? Herbaluce is the great type. Um, Herbaluce is most commonly known in the Canavese area, a bit further south, where it makes Herbaluce di Calusso. Um, and Herbaluce di Calusso is a DOCG, and the consortio that controls Herbaluce di Calusso does not want the name Herbaluce to go out to other producers. So all of the other Alto Piemonte producers who are growing out Herbaluce have to have to name their wine table wine or declassify it to something fairly shapeless like um, Coste de la Cessia, uh, Bianco, where, but they can't mention the grape type. So he, this one's called Blanc One, so blank one. Um, they don't mention the grape type on the bottle. It doesn't have the vintage on it, so Vino de Tavola. It's been aged in oak. It's got real structure, real weight. This is serious white wine. Um, anyway, beautiful. I really hope you enjoy it. It's great wine. Um, extremely rare. I mean, colossally rare. We only, we've, we only got a few, 180 bottles, something like that. So, you know, we've, we've just picked up this. We didn't get any of last vintage because we, we were too late. You've got to be really fast on getting this one. Um, Anyway, the next one we're doing, another one which you have to be really quick on, Sasso Carlo. It's a legend. Um, and for me, one of the really important wines of Italy, one of the original uh, natural wines, certainly coming out of Tuscany, um, made by Rosella um, Benici, who's, she just gets it. And she's an absolute devotee of this system of making wine. So biodynamic farming in the vineyards using almost no steel. So fermented and aged in wood, a little bit of concrete, open tanks, longer macerations. It's, it's an extraordinary wine. So it's based on old vine Treviano, a um, bit of Malvasia, but, but essentially it's just using... It's using the great old white grapes of the area and it's the production's tiny and it's magnificent, magnificent wine. Some of you may have picked her up on telly, she was on Gino's um, something or other, the cookery program. Um, anyway, it's, it's, it's great wine. So moving on to the reds, we, we kick off with Stefano Mancinelli. So we start in the Marche um, and here's Lacrima di Moro d'Alba. Lacrima is a grape. Um, D from Moro d'Alba, the town of Moro d'Alba, which is one of the Castelli di Iesi, one of the castle towns of the Iesi. A slightly confusing name and extraordinary wine. I mean, the wine is um, so aromatic. It's almost the equivalent of Red Gewürztraminer. It's got spice, Turkish delight. It's, it's not 
no real power and weight to it. It's it's a slightly fresher style of wine, quite full flavoured, but but not not particularly full bodied. Delicious wine. Then we go to to Stefano um, from Stefano to Camillo Montori, whose wine really is full bodied. This is Montepulciano, Montepulciano, the great type d'Abruzzo from the Abruzzo, um, Colin Terame, Hills of Terame. So this is a particular little, it's quite new DOCG. This is the first time I bought this wine as Colleen Terame. In the old days, there was a Fonte Cupa Montepulciano and a Fonte Cupa Colleen Terame. Now, just all being mashed together, which makes a lot more sense. Um, and this is one of the last of this style of wine, aged in old Botti Grandi, so um, large barrels, um, matured or the fermentation is in concrete tanks. Um, <clears throat> just fantastic wine, old vine, straight, it's just, it just hasn't changed for 50 years. Uh, Camilo must be in his 80s now and he's just still making great wine. We then go down a little bit further south to Paolo Pitrilli. Um, and Paolo was, I haven't bought this wine for a long time. This is the straight Nero di Troia, which is aged in oak. So he calls it il guero, and it's uh, when it's when this wine's on fire. It's uh, for me. It's, it's, it's it is his great wine. Um, I mean, I love the Agramante, but it doesn't have the oak aging on it, so it doesn't quite have the same texture and power. Um, which honestly, I prefer to drink most of the time. That lighter, fresher style the Agramante gives. But for a really important wine, this Nero di Troia is astonishing wine. And this, this is this is a great, great, great vintage. So we're sitting on the 2019. And 19 <clears throat> has real power, real structure, great direction. It's, it's a superb vintage for this wine. Um, highly recommended, very exciting. And then we go to the 2018 Petresco from Le Cinciole. Now, this is effectively, it's a, it's a Gran Selezione Chianti. It's 100% Sangiovese. Um, it's from... It's a very small single vineyard part of Le Cinciole. It used to be bottled as a Chianti Classico Reserva. And then when Chianti Classico uh, Gran Selezione was introduced, he, he decided to make it into a table wine, or EGT Toscana. Really, almost as a protest against Gran Selezione, which now is all changed because Gran Selezione uh, his rules have changed and he's happy with the new rules. So Petresco, though, has remained as a Toscana EGT and the Aloigi has been um, has been promoted to Gran Selezione, which kind of makes sense. You know, it's, it's, it's a very sensible way of treating his wines. But the Petresco, for me, is the astonishing one. It, it has that kind of restraint and more minerality, almost more stony feel to it, but beautifully pure fruit. And the 18 gives such clarity because the tannins are so controlled and it's very open for drinking very early on. So um, a really, really classic Chianti Classico, but not a Chianti Classico, uh, an EGT Toscana by name, Chianti Classico in nature and the purest kind. It, it just reminds me of many of the best wines of, of Toscana. <coughs> or the ones I like best, Montevitrini and things like this. It's that style. So anyway, we've gone to, to surmise. We've got a couple of Tuscans in this case. We've both biodynamic production, Sasso Carlo, absolutely classic white. I don't think there's a better old vine. Paolo Beers isn't that dissimilar. Um, there's nothing better, really. Cinciolet's Petresco, really, really hard to beat. Um, then we've got one from Aosta uh, in, 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 in Pianta Grossa, uh, Marche, Puglia and Abruzzo. This really is a proper Vini Curiosity case. I like it a lot. So if you want to get involved with the tasting, please get in touch with us. Send me an email to ben at batwine.uk or give us a call. The numbers are all on the website. Otherwise, we'll see you at the tasting. Look forward to it. Have a brilliant year. All the best. Bye.